Hey there, Dangas Stu here. Today's video is about installing a voltage sensitive relay when you have a dual battery set up in a boat and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. First though, I've got another viewer t-shirt photo. This one is from Tony Rich, who's a long time viewer commenter and he's from Tasmania, which is my original plan for this video was to install the voltage sensitive relay and a solar cell at the same time, but it turned out it took me quite a while to do the VSR alone, so I'm going to keep them as separate videos. But what we'll do is I'll start by showing you what the overall design plan is, and then we'll go into just doing the VSR today. In a previous video, I added a second battery to my original starting battery for the outboard, and I connected them via a switch. And all that switch did was let me select them both in parallel, select one or the other and have them off entirely. Now in some ways this will give me slightly less functionality in the sense that I won't be able to disconnect the batteries entirely unless I put another switch in. But what it does give me is a system that doesn't rely on me manually switching it all the time. It's kind of a bit set and forget and that's what I like about it. The first thing I think is worth mentioning is there are two main types of VSRs. There's single and dual VSRs. A joule will actually sense the voltage coming from both sides, from both batteries, and if either one of them is above 13.3 volts, i.e. is actively being charged, then it'll close the circuit and allow the other battery to be charged. The VSR I'm using today is the only one I can actually get at short notice, and it is a single, and it will be connected, the sensing pole will be connected to the starting battery, which in turn gets charged from the motor. Because of this, I've drawn the diagram to have the solar cell also connected to the starting battery. Down the track, if I can get a dual VSR, I may actually just move the solar cell to be charging the house battery, so that the house battery is charged by the solar cell, the starting battery is charged by the motor, and if either of those is happening, the motor's running, or it's sunny, or both, then the VSR will activate and will charge the other battery as well. One other thing I am going to add in the way of switching though is a manual switch that just bypasses the VSR. And this is really good if, for whatever reason, this starting battery's gone flat, maybe just the ignition was left on or something like that. That way I can switch this switch on and start the motor on the house battery. Without that switch, the VSR would have an open circuit and I wouldn't be able to start it on the house battery without physically swapping them over. The other thing you'll see in this diagram is we've just got a ground coming down here from the VSR to the ground for the two batteries and I also have a couple of fuses either side of the VSR. Alright, we'll be installing the solar cell side of things next week but for now let's get on and replace this manual switch with the VSR. What I'll do is I'll show you what I currently have in the boat, what I've taken out and what we're going to do next. So here are the two batteries. Neither of them I think are in great condition unfortunately. I might put the battery tester on them in a second, see what it says. I've got this one currently just hooked up to a battery charger temporarily because the boat's been sitting around for a while, not being used. These two batteries are both Seamaster MFM50, so they're identical batteries, which I think is good if you're going to have batteries in parallel like this. This cable here just connects the two negatives of the battery. These two cables here are coming from the outboard itself. And then here and here, are two leads from the positives that just come up to here that used to go to my old battery switch which I've now removed. My plan is to attach these two cables to the bypass switch which means if I switch it on I'll always be able to attempt to start the motor off my house battery. So that's my plan for these two existing cables. So looking back at our diagram those two cables that were sitting in the rod holder are these two cables. They're just positives that come off both batteries. And my plan is to take them up here to this switch, the bypass switch. This is the bypass switch I'm gonna use, just an on-off Narva switch from an auto parts store. It's probably worth mentioning at this point that my plan is to put everything inside the seat slash toolbox, so nothing's gonna be in the weather. Having cleaned up those old terminals, I've just realized this has 10 millimeter posts, not eight millimeter posts. So I'm going to have to replace the terminals on those leads anyway. These switches have the option to sort of pop out these sides. I'm gonna pop out both sides and have the cables coming through rather than trying to squeeze both cables past each other. Yeah. 
So where this switch has the 10 mil terminals rather than the eights on the previous switch, the voltage sensitive relay itself is down to like six mil. You can see here on the front, this is rated at 125 amps. I was looking at buying some of these high current a &L fuse holders, but what I remembered is I had these sort of maxi, I think they call them, yeah, maxi inline fuse holders upstairs that I already bought, actually by accident, to be honest with you. So I think I'm gonna use these. And here somewhere, here we go. These blade fuses are rated at 100 amps. Now the wire connecting these fuse holders is quite thick, can't tell you the exact diameter, but it's certainly a lot thicker than the 50 amp wire I have below my bench. So I'm pretty confident this is designed as a holder to take the current of the maximum fuse you can buy for it. Because I've got two of these, I'm going to put one on each side of the VSR. I'm not sure if that's entirely necessary. I've certainly seen circuit diagrams for dual sensing VSRs that have a fuse on both sides. I'm gonna put it on both sides purely because I think the length of the two of them together is gonna to be long enough to connect the two batteries together so it saves me splicing in any extra wire or anything like that. I also need to get the earth wire for the VSR to the batteries. It's not quite long enough for where I plan to mount the VSR so I'm going to extend this slightly as well. The VSR now has the two fuse holders attached via the six mil lugs and the ground for it has an eight mil lug on the end as well. So that's ready to install. I've also got the hydraulic crimper here and we'll take this over and we'll put the 10 mil lugs onto the other two positive leads so we can install our bypass switch. Next thing I'll do is just cut these old eight mil ring terminals off, put the tens on. I've now got two new 10 mil terminals crimped onto the ends of the positive leads from both batteries. And this is what's gonna to go to my bypass switch. I've got another video on making these leads up, so I won't go through this in detail again. I'll put a link to that in the description. It doesn't matter which way they go on this switch, it's just a switch just connects them. All right, a little bit of a mess, but I'll show you how it's hooked up. Here's the grounds or the negatives of both batteries connected to each other. The positives are connected through this VSR. The negative lead for the VSR just goes to the negative one of the batteries. They're all linked, so it's just a common ground. Now, one thing that's really important when you're hooking this up is this terminal here with a little bit of red paint on it is the sensing terminal. So that has to go to the battery that the motor is connected to, the starting battery. Because when this battery gets charged by the outboard, so the outboard's charging this battery, comes through, and when this VSR detects that charging current there, i.e. the motor's running, that's when it'll allow it to pass. If you have it the other way around, this terminal will never see that charging current and will never activate, never work. Then here, also going positive to positive, I've simply got my switch. At the moment, this is on, meaning the batteries are always in parallel. Then if I switch it to off, like that, then it's only in parallel when the VSR is active. And then we've got our motor connected here to our starting battery. And then these two wires here go to a terminal block under the dash and that feeds all the other electrics in the boat. Now everything's installed, let's do a bit of testing, see how it works. On the front of this VSR is a little LED to show when the battery's being combined, when it's got a closed circuit. So what I'm gonna do is just hook this battery tester back up to this battery. And then after a few seconds, you'll hear it click and the LEDs come on. Now if I put the multimeter on the starting battery, we've got 13.27 volts. And on the house battery, 13.27 as well. Now if I disconnect the charger, the battery will have a little bit of a surface charge, but that'll dissipate pretty quickly. And eventually when that drops below 12.8, it'll disconnect the batteries from each other. There we go, just clicked off then at 12.788 or something. 
So that part of the setup seems to be working really well. I'll just quickly show you two other optional features this VSR has before we head back inside. On the back here you can see there are two loops of wire. To use these features you cut the loops and then connect them appropriately. One of them is designed to go to the ignition so that when the boat's off that this doesn't be in standby mode, it goes off completely so it doesn't draw any current. It only draws a small amount in standby but it's a feature you can use. This other black wire is to give you a similar LED to here, but it lets you extend it off remotely so I could put that up on the dash somewhere so I could see from there whether it's active or not active. I was actually gonna mount the VSR up inside this box here, but having seen now, it's got an IP67 rating, so it's actually quite waterproof and dustproof and everything. So for the ease of being able to pull the batteries in and out when I need to, I might actually just leave it under the box here. The battery switch, the bypass switch, and the controller for the solar cell next week I'll probably mount in here though. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this video gives you some ideas about what a VSR does and how you can go about installing it in a dual battery setup. Next week I'm gonna push on and install the solar cell for charging these batteries, and that'll sort of build on the work we've done today. All right, well, take care, I'll see you then, bye.